Hey all, hope you're keeping well. Welcome to Wednesday the 17th of uh, June 2020 and I hope you're all keeping well and warm and wrapped up uh, during this very cold snap that we are experiencing in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, today we're going to be continuing with the Bible study and looking at the um, business work and economic, uh, economic sphere and how we can bring the Word of God and the Kingdom dynamics into into play in what we what we do and how we can consider what the Lord has to say about um, uh, many things and today we're looking at the um, what God uh, says about oppression and justice and those who exploit the economically and social, socially vulnerable um, so it's quite a, a, a chunky session today there's a, a number of uh, verses that we're going to be looking at so before we start, I just want to open up in prayer and just give this time to the Lord. So Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise. We come to you today. We humble ourselves as we continue to labor for your kingdom. And we just ask in the name of Jesus that you give us the opportunity to hear what you have to say through the word and just consider it in all that we do so that we may be able to move forward together in uh, unity and strength. And give us the opportunity to be able to share this with others so, and become the, 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 the light and the salt that you have asked us to be. So, Father God, thank you for your, 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 your word and thank you for the opportunity to spend this time with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So, it's uh, another interesting day of talking about oppression, injustice and um, those that are economically vulnerable and... Uh, 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 socially vulnerable so to say so let's have a look at the first one we're taking it from Exodus um, chapter 22 and we're going to be looking at verses 22 to 27 and starting from 21 um, yeah you shall neither neither mistreat a stranger nor oppress him for you were strangers in the land of Egypt you shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child if you afflict them in any way and they cry out to me I'll surely hit their, hear their cry and my wrath will become hot, and I will kill you with a sword. Your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. For if you lend money to my people, who are poor among you, you shall not be like the money lender to him. You shall not charge him interest. If you ever take your neighbor's garments as a pledge, you shall return it to him before the sun goes down. For what it is, for for that is his only covering. It is it is his garment for his skin. What will he sleep in? And will it be that when he cries out to me? I will hear, for I am gracious. So, yeah, that's quite an opening that. I'm trying to keep in mind that um, we're all going through a very, very difficult season. And as much as we want to give, we are limited to the amount that we receive in order to give. And as we learned yesterday, it's more blessed to give than to receive. So... We look at a couple of principles here, which um, I know it may be some difficulty for some owners, uh, businesses, ministries, or wherever at the moment, government with uh, tight restrictions on budgets. But it also allows us to be able to have trust in the Lord that we'll be able to be fruitful and multiply. It does talk about not being uh, affliction to bring affliction to uh, people and treating them with content, and obviously. Um, lending to the poor is a, is a good and honorable thing to the Lord. And uh, the, the, the honor that is paid uh, to God is also to be paid to those who represent Him and want to do the will of the Father. Excuse me, I'm cold. Um, ah, there we go, nice and warm. So those are the first couple of verses that we were opening up with. But let's go to Deuteronomy. And we're looking at Deuteronomy uh, 24 um verses 15 14 and 15 yeah so you shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy whether one of your uh, brethren or one that uh, that of the aliens who is in your land within your gates each day you shall give him your wages or his wages and not let the sun go down on it for he is poor and has set his heart on it lest he cry out against you to the lord and it be sin to you. Again, we're looking at the uh, principles of being able to continue um, supporting the people through um, wages, regardless of the COVID-19 experience that we're going through, and being able to see how we can honor those commitments. I am hearing that there are cutbacks that people are bringing in, and uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a difficult one, because if they don't bring in the cutbacks, then 
there might not be enough to go around. Um, but at the same time, we're called to uh, be salt and light and use our talents to be able to produce profits and to be able to help the poor and the needy. So let's have a look at the uh, Deuteronomy 25 verses 13 to 16. And uh, this talks about uh, not having a bag, uh, differing uh, weights, and heavy and light. You shall not have in your house different measures, large or small. And you shall have a perfect and just way, a perfect and just measure, that your days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord your God has given you. So, uh, for all who do such things, all who be behave unrighteously, are an ab abomination to the Lord your God. So it's just talking about being very wise in terms of how we steward the finances that are given to us and that the Lord is entrusting with us. And the, what, what, he's, what He's given us to be creative with the kingdom, um, to be able to you know, bring profitability and again helping the poor and the needy. Let's have a look at uh, the next one which is Proverbs 22 verses 16. It says, He who oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he who gives to the rich will surely come to poverty. So it's basically talking about the, 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 um, uh, the, the balance between the rich and the poor, and being able to distribute uh, what the rich have to be able to help the poor, so that the poor can have something to eat and have shelter and to be able to labor and toil, so that they have purpose and a vision for their own lives that the Lord has given to them, hopefully, prayerfully. Um, through the word of God that will be able to set the foundation for them to be able to be prosperous and to give to others. So let's have a look at the next one. We're taking it um, from the book of Amos and we're taking it from chapter 8 verses 4 to 10. Hear this, you who swallow up the needy and make the poor of the land fail, saying, when will the new moon be passed? that we may sell it grain, and the Sabbath, that we make trade wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel large, falsifying the scales by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, even sell the bad wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall the land not tremble for this? and every one mourn who dwells in it. All of it shall swell like the river, and heave and subside like the river of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in the day, says the Lord, that I will make the sun go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the broad of daylight, and I will turn the feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation, and I will bring sackcloth on every waist, and baldness on every head. I will make it like mourning for an only son, and it's end like a bitter day. So it's quite a, uh, it's a bit of a difficult one to digest that because it's talking about, um, yeah, um, the Lord and His uh, sovereignty and righteousness, and uh, He's powerful enough to be able to um, make the day night and the night day. And uh, the bad wheat is also a mixture of chaff and other impurities with the wheat. And that's what we just got to be careful of when we move forward. And all that we're doing is making sure that we are doing it fairly uh, unto the Lord. And to be able to give Him all the praise and glory and honor. Right, let's go through to the next one which is found in the book of Micah. And we're taking it from Micah chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. So this is talking about the evildoers. Woe to those who devise iniquity and a work out of evil on the beds, at morning and light and the practice it because it is in the power of their hand, and they covet fields and take them by violence, also houses and seize them. So they oppress a man in his house, a man and in his in inheritance. Yeah, the, sin the sinful state of God's people is not only evident in itself idolatry, but also in injustice. And Israel and Judah would be sent into exile for both of these sins. So let's learn how to see how we can learn from that. The next one we're going to be looking at is Malachi chapter 3 verses 5. So if we have a look at that verse on its, on its own, but I'd encourage you to read the whole chapter, which is the coming messenger. This is the last book in the Old Testament. 
I will come near you for judgment. I will be swift witness against the sorcerers, idolaters, and perjurers, against those who exploit wage, earners, and widows, and orphans, and again those who turn away an alien because the Lord, because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. Again, it's talking about how to be able to uh, care for the needy, the widows, the orphans, uh, the fatherless, and be there for each other. Um, so that we can build each other up because you might have people that are down and out and all they need is a lifting hand as Jesus does with us to be able to continue making a difference for others right then we're having a look at the uh, last few and we're taking it from Colossians verses uh, chapter 4 verses 1 and uh, this is talking about um, uh, the, the Christian home that's quite a nice little read, and again, I would encourage you to uh, read the whole chapter. But uh, let's have a look at the verse 1, which says, Masters, give to your bond servants what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. And then goes on to talk about Christian graces. Um, but uh, God does also talk about um, partiality, and uh, talks about the, uh, the, the, the non-bias because of uh, his... Uh, sovereignty and also talking about um, no no position or rank um, or circumstances would excuse anybody from blessings or uh, judgment and remember the Lord has his judgment pending but he wants us to turn back to him so that he may bless us through his son Jesus Christ and then we can redeem the time which allows us an opportunity to use that stewardship wisely um, to be able to redeem what we have and what we can do to work together in order to make a difference in other people's lives. Then the final one that we're looking at for today is taken from James chapter 5 verses 4. And uh, if we look at the verse itself, which talks about rich, uh, rich oppressors will be judged. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mow your fields which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sab uh, Sabaoth. Uh, yeah, if we take that into context, uh, it, it, it talks about a rich person appears at uh, the judgment of God, and any dishonest gain is um, weighed up in the eyes of the Lord, and uh, all those people that are uh, doing their best under the circumstances are... I, I pray for you. I pray for you and your family that you'll be able to get through the season by the grace of God, that He will be able to bring you into a place of fruitfulness and a place of being able to labor for the kingdom with a foundation set on the Word and through worship and prayer. But let's have a look at it. It talks about the Lord on uh, James chapter 5, verses 4. The Lord of Sabaoth is literally the Lord of hosts, and He is the commander of the armies of heaven. So while we continue to labor and strive and be there for one each other in the body of Christ and bringing people into the kingdom at the same time, let's think of creative ways that we can do that, knowing that our ultimate um, uh, ultimate commander is, is our Lord God, who will be able to guide us into all truth and uh, assist us. And remember, if you're struggling and uh, you're not able to meet your commitments, I've been there, my heart is with you. We want to do good, uh, but don't be con don't find yourself in a place of condemnation due to external uh, factors that haven't been allowed you the the opportunity to be able to meet and uh, do what the Lord has asked you to do. But do it in all of your heart unto the Lord, so that He can see that you're making the deposits in heaven, and for those on earth that will be able to stand you in good stead when we see the Lord again. So I just want to end off this uh, short time in prayer. I know that I've skimmed through quite a lot of the verses and haven't really dissected them as much as I have in the others. Um, because I don't want to place too much emphasis on the law side of things. But it's also important to recognize that it is important to remember these things so that we are able to be in a position of good stewardship and of being able to allow uh, uh, economic prosper uh, prosperity in these very very difficult times so it's, a, it's, it's been a difficult um, session today because we want to be liberated we want to be free but we want to do it in in accordance to the Lord's uh, voice his word 
And my prayer is for you to be able to spend time in that hidden place, that intimate place with the Lord, so that He may be able to speak to you and guide you in ways that you may be able to overcome the challenges that we all face on a daily basis and to be able to find a solution to our earthly problems but more importantly being able to be a witness to those that are outside the body of Christ and bring them in so that they can be nourished both physically and spiritually. So I want to end off in prayer and I want to ask the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, we, go, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for these words that you have given us, Lord. And they're not easy words to digest, especially during a time like this. But Lord, by the blood of the Lamb and by the blood of Jesus, we believe that you have a way that's good and will allow us to be able to labor for your kingdom and be a witness to the world that so desperately needs to hear your voice. So Father God, we just ask today that you give each and, us, each and every one of us the opportunity to be able to continue uh, in all that we do, making efforts and toiling for your kingdom and by your supernatural grace and mercy and power allow us to be able to depend on you for our manner and allow us to keep our eyes fixed on you because we serve you, we love you and we want to uh, exalt you to your rightful place that so many people don't see you at right now. So Lord we just give you this time and we give you praise and we ask to renew our hearts to take out the heart of stone that we may have regarding our situation and circumstances and replace it with the heart of flesh so that we can work together and uh, labor for the kingdom of God your kingdom Lord your kingdom come in the mighty name of Jesus Amen thanks guys I hope that's been useful I hope that's been quite a bit of a nugget let's have a look at what we're going to be doing tomorrow going to be looking at biblical values and precepts that can be modeled in, in the context of daily business life or ministry life. This makes our message as a witness more credible and also life in business can be a training ground for moral and spiritual development and maturity. So that's quite a nice one to look forward to tomorrow and we're nearly finished. We've got uh, uh, tomorrow, Friday and Saturday to go through and then we've completed this uh, 14 or 10, 10 day um, devotional that will allow us to be able to cement our faith in him and to be able to continue taking that one step at a time to bring fruit into his harvest field so I just want to pray blessings over you and uh, may the Lord keep you and shine his face upon you and we'll see you tomorrow take care lots of love